Hi everyone, welcome to the third lecture of the series Linear Quadratic Regulator. In this lecture, we discuss the steady state analysis of the continuous time LQR. Here is the overview. We start with the basic idea of the steady state analysis and also the definition of controllability. Then we move on to the steady state analysis of LQR. In steady state analysis, we are interested in the convergence of the system variables as the time increases. When it comes to steady state analysis of continuous time LQR, we focus on the convergence of the Riccati matrices and feedback gains as t increases or as t tends to infinity. We call the LQR problem in which t goes up to infinity as infinite horizon LQR. Therefore, in steady state analysis, we are considering infinite horizon LQR problem. From the previous lecture, we obtain the expression for the Riccati matrix P of T as the solution of the Riccati differential equation as given in equation number 1 and the optimal feedback gate as in equation number 2. Here, both the Riccati matrix and feedback gate are functions of the time T. Therefore, we are interested in whether these matrices converge to some fixed matrices as T increases. Now, in this equation, if P of T converges to a constant matrix, then the derivative P dot should be 0. And also, if P of T converges to a constant matrix, then K of T also converges to a fixed matrix. Now, a sufficient requirement for the steady state convergence of LQR is the controllability of the system, which we will discuss next. To discuss controllability, we are considering the linear system as defined in equation number 3. Controllability can be considered as the ability to transfer the system from any initial state to any desired state using finite control inputs. It is basically a property which is related to the actuators of the system and can be considered as the ability of the actuators to influence the system completely, which means on each state variables. For example, in the case of a second order single input system, we only have one input, but there is two state variables. Now the controllability addresses can we control both the states to any desired value using the control input. There are different definitions of the controllability. And usually in the definitions, the desired state is considered as origin. Since we can transfer any non-zero reference to zero using a suitable coordinate transformation. Therefore, the system is said to be completely controllable if any initial state x0 can be transferred to origin in finite time using a finite control input u of t, where t belongs to the closed interval 0 to t1. We can also define controllability using the concept of the controllable subspace, which we denote as the set Cs. The set Cs consists of the initial state x0 in Rn, which can be transferred to origin in a finite time using a finite control action. Now, the system is said to be completely controllable or simply as controllable if the set Cs equal to Rn. Next, we discuss the basic criteria for the LTA system to ensure controllability. We have from the basic linear system theory, the general solution of the state equation is obtained as in equation number 4. Now, if we substitute t equal to t1 in the solution, we obtain equation number 5. For controllability, we require to have some control input to this equation, which makes x of t1 0. Now, if we substitute x of t1 0 here, then this equation can be rewritten as in equation number 6, in which we take taken this term to the right hand side, and we have e raised to a t1 is common in both sides, and it can be cancelled. Now, from the Cayley Hamilton theorem, we can have this important result which says that every polynomial of the square matrix A of order n by n can be written as a linear combination of the matrices i, a, a square up to a raised to n minus 1. Consequently, we can rewrite the exponential e raised to minus a tau as a linear combination of i, a, a square up to a raised to n minus 1. Using this, we can rewrite the last equation as in equation number 7 in which we replace e raised to minus a tau by the linear combination beta 0 into i plus beta 1 into a plus up to beta n minus 1 into a raised to n minus 1. Now in the next step, we take b inside this bracket which gives this equation. Now if we integrate u of tau over 0 to t1 and take this inside this bracket, we can rewrite this as alpha 0 into b, alpha 1 into ab up to alpha n minus 1 into a raised to n minus 1 b. So here alpha 0 is basically beta 0 into minus of integral 0 to t1 u of tau d tau. 
So here this coefficient is alpha zero, alpha one up to alpha n minus one are some functions of the control input u of tau. Now we can rewrite this equation as in equation number eight, in which we combined all these coefficients in a vector. We define the matrix C x like this, which is constructed of the terms b, a b up to a raised to n minus one b, and denote this vector as u alpha, using which the last equation can be written as x zero equal to C x into u alpha. Now, from the basic linear algebra theory, we have a unique solution u alpha to this equation if x zero is in the column space of the matrix C x. The column space of C x consists of the subspace which is spanned by the column vectors of the matrix C x. Therefore, for each initial state x zero in the column space of the matrix C x, there exists a solution u alpha to this equation, which means there exists a control input to the state equation that makes x of t one equal to zero. Hence, the controllable subspace C s will be equal to the column space of the matrix C x, and we call the matrix C x as the controllability matrix. Now, the system is completely controllable if the column space of the matrix C x equal to R n. Which means rank of C x equal to n. Therefore, the linear system A B is said to be completely controllable if the controllability matrix C x has rank n. Next, we move on to the steady state analysis of L Q R. Here, we are considering the infinite horizon L Q R cost as defined in equation number ten, and for a finite cost j, we require the state x of t and control input u of t equal to zero as t tends to infinity. This basically implies the system should be stable or asymptotically stable under the LQR control law. We have seen that if the LTA system is controllable, we can drive x of t to origin, which also makes u of t as zero. Therefore, in order to have a finite optimal cost, a sufficient condition is the controllability of the system, or at least the stabilizability of the system. Now, from the previous lecture, we have the optimal cost for the LQR j star is equal to v zero star of x zero. Which is the cost to a function at t equal to zero, and this can be represented as x zero transpose p of zero x zero, where p of zero is the Riccati matrix for t equal to zero. Now, for a finite value of the optimal cost, we require the matrix p of zero should be a finite matrix. Now, we have this important result which says that if the LTA system A B is controllable and the weighting matrix Q is positively definite. Then the solution to the Riccati differential equation converges to a unique positive definite matrix P S of the algebraic Riccati equation as given in equation number thirteen, and this results in a unique feedback gain K S as given in equation number fourteen, such that all the eigenvalues of A minus B K S lies in the left half of the complex plane, which basically means the real part of the eigenvalues will be less than zero. This also means A minus B K S will be closed loop stable. And this gives the optimal cost as j star is equal to x zero transpose p s x zero. Since the matrix p of t converges to p of s, we have the initial matrix p of zero will be equal to p of s. Note that the algebraic Riccati equation is obtained by replacing the Riccati matrix p of t with the steady state matrix p s and the derivative p dot with zero. And similarly, the steady state gain k s is obtained by replacing p of t with p s. In the feedback gain equation. In next lecture, we discuss the simulation of the continuous time LQR and try to get a more detailed idea about the behavior of LQR in transient period and in steady state. That completes this lecture. Thanks for listening.